Oxygen Glass Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So here would be a super simple application. I'll show you a full one in just a few slides, but you can see that I've written a class which extends application. And that's where we typically will be packaging up the main method, right? So inside of there, you can handle those events that we mentioned, get the first window on the screen, and then you just kind of sit there in the background waiting to eventually terminate. Now notice how the main method has been decorated with STA thread, right? Single threaded apartment for any of you COM people out there. This is actually mandatory. If you forget to decorate your main method with STA thread, you're going to get a runtime exception. This just makes sure that if your WPF program is using any legacy COM objects or ActiveX controls, they're going to be thread safe automatically. Now thankfully Visual Studio and Blend always put that attribute there for you. Just make sure you don't delete it. Now as far as the window class goes, you know, don't worry, I'm not going to walk through every single piece in this little quick video. But I do want to point your attention to maybe the most interesting of all of these parent classes. And that would be content control. WPF and Silverlight and Windows Phone 7, they all support this really interesting model called the content model. Now, from a simple definition point of view, you can think of content as whatever is inside of the interior of a control, right? That's not strictly the, the, the prim and proper definition, but that, that'll serve our purposes here. Now, usually when we think about content of a control, things are very kind of vanilla flavored, right? A button has string data as content. A list box has a collection of strings as list items. Well, with this idea of content, you can plug inside of a control whatever you want to put there, right? So if you wanted to say, well, my button actually has an embedded stack panel, and in that stack panel I have some graphics, uh, 3D animation, and text, you could put that inside of your button. Now, the content model is our very first step in customization. You know, if you wanted to make a button like this. In any other framework, Windows Forms, MFC, what have you, Java Swing, you'd need to subclass, right? You'd probably have some new class, which is a button. Then you'd be overriding a whole bunch of different virtual methods. And then you'd have to write a whole bunch of complex graphics code just to get that little simple circle inside of there correctly, right? Well, in the world of WPF, all you have to do is embed into the scope of the content control the new content, right? Now I'm going to actually show this happening real time. Let's just see how this would actually look. This will also be a, an example of another little tool that I want to share with you. There's a great tool out there you can get for free on the web. It's called Kazaml, right? I love the name. Reminds me of Shazam for some reason. I'm not sure why. What Kazaml is, is basically just a very, very lightweight editor to go ahead and type in markup and then see how it looks. There's no C-sharp code. There's no Visual Basic code. You're not worried about web services or whatnot. You're just trying to play around with markup to see how it looks and feels, right? Kazaml has a bunch of other nice things like a little color picker. We can go ahead and beautify the markup right? Bunch of built-in example code snippets that you can paste inside of there. But back to what we're seeing, so notice that this is still the same button, right? A system.windows.controls.button object. But I simply said, I don't want my content just to be a blob of string. I want it to be this slightly more interesting collection of controls here, right?
So again, this alone is a great step forward. It really reduces the amount of times we have to subclass because now we can just whip up any kind of content that we want. And if you have a skilled graphical artist, they can make that look a lot more pretty than what I just did. Okay, so now let's take these two classes, application and window, and build something. Now remember, for this first little example I want to show you, we're not going to have any markup. We're just going to do it all by code, right? Now let's just kind of analyze what's going on here in the code. And, you know, don't worry about trying to read every single thing. I'm just going to try to point out a couple of key pieces for you to get you thinking. All right, so what I did with this first iteration is I packaged up everything inside of the actual application class. So you can see here's my main method. When the main method starts up I'm going to create one of my application objects. I'm going to wire up my events. Then I'm going to call the run method. Okay, Very typical code for a WPF main method. Now in these event handlers the most interesting one is happening in my startup handler. This is where I'm just going to make one of my windows. And I'll set up some basic little characteristics like the height and the width. Then I'll just call the show method. The other two event handlers, you can see what I've done here in my dispatcher unhandled exception. I'm just going to scrape out the actual error from the incoming event args. And whatever you do with it is up to you. You might put it in an error log, right? You might email the system administrator. This is just a standard way to catch any problems that you didn't see as you were writing your code. So no XAML, right? If I were to compile and run this program right now, I would just get your basic, simple, topmost window. We can clean that up, of course. You know, typically you're going to want a subclass window, right? So now I'll go ahead and just make a custom constructor. So I can go ahead and encapsulate all that startup logic here. And then that will also simplify what I have to do back in my startup handler. Now I'll just make one of my own custom windows as opposed to the uh, window window. Now, as I said, you could build an entire application using nothing but C sharp or visual basic code, but it'll get pretty tedious, especially when you're working with some more of those fancy things like the animations and the, the, the you know, vector graphics and whatnot, that can be a lot of code. So that's exactly where XAML can step in for us. And when you look at XAML the first time, there appears to be a little bit of magic here, and we know that there's never any real magic. So let me go to Visual Studio, and I want to show you what really happens to XAML. Then I'll talk a little bit about some, some interesting bits of syntax. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.